Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. I just can't stay away from the Super C project. Whenever I've got an hour to spare here and there, I've been puttering away on it. So I got the engine block all cleaned up. I stripped the engine block down the rest of the way. I took the sleeves out, which are no big deal, and here's some video of how easy they came out. And I took the head studs off, took the gallery oil plugs out of the side of the engine so I could clean out the oil gallery, stripped every piece off, took the soft plug off of the coolant gallery down here so I could wash that out. And then I took a pressure washer and degreaser and just blasted the crap out of it and cleaned all the gunk off of it. It came out pretty good, looks clean again. After I was done pressure washing, I took all the surfaces I worried might rust, like this mating surface on the top of the block and the bearing journals down in there, and I put a little light coat of oil on them so that they wouldn't rust. And what I need to do next while I'm waiting for my machine shop work to be finished is to strip down the rear end of the tractor. I wanna get everything off of the transmission, the final drive, and the torque tube so I can pull the torque tube off, clean out the torque tube, check the transmission seals. I wanna pull the rear wheels and the rear wheel centers off. Just get this down so maybe, hopefully, I can get it cleaned up and ready to paint before it gets cold out. That way I can have all the doors open, maybe push this outside even. Makes it a lot less dirty process. So that's what we're doing today, or for a little while today, a little while, a couple days from now, I'll put it all together into one video. First thing to do is to take this battery box apart and get it off. Didn't I just have this off not too long ago? Boy, whoever put this bolt on sure is strong. Here's one side. Here's the other side. Now we can get started on removing the hydraulic touch control unit right here, which comes off as one piece. First thing to do is disconnect the fast hitch connection here. Just gotta pull a pin out. See the pin? Comes off. Down you go. And then on the other side of the tractor, this is the hydraulic valve that controls the up and down on the fast hitch. So we gotta disconnect that. Well, you're just being, you know, I didn't want you to give me any trouble. Didn't we talk about this yesterday? It would help if I turned you the right way, wouldn't it? Then you would be more cooperative. And I think I'll pull the starter off because it helps me get at the mounting bolt for the touch control. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. We gotta swing this up. Take that out. There we go. Now we're going to take this touch control unit off. There's just four bolts, one on each corner of it, that hook it down to the torque tube down here. And what the touch control is, is basically it's hydraulic valve controls in the hydraulic cylinders all in one block. So if you take this back plate off, there's a whole bunch of little check valves, O-rings, springs, all that kind of stuff. And you can rebuild these. They're not too hard to rebuild. This one works great, so I'm not going to rebuild it. And then in the front, you've got two hydraulic cylinders, one here and one here. And this one drives, I'm going to forget now, I think this side and that outer one over there and then this one just drives this one inside one that's used to control the fast hitch. I know a bunch of people asked that I would take this apart and rebuild this one, but it works great. I have taken them apart and rebuilt them before. You just take these two plates off, then you can clean out the case. This one's got a new filter that I put into it because the old one had a tear in it. And you can take that out and check that out, clean the case out. When you pull this plate off, you gotta make sure that all the little doodads that go in the multiple holes that are drilled into the block. You keep track of them and then you get a rebuild kit from Case IH that's got all the wear parts in it. The O-rings, the springs, and the gaskets, everything you need. And you just put it back together. Just make sure everything's clean. This thing's kind of heavy. It's one of those things, you know, you can barely pick it up. So I'm going to use the hoist. Probably when I did the Super A, I picked it up, but well, I'm a lot older now.
And there she is. This is the face that mounts down on the top of the torque tube. Underneath here you can see the two hydraulic cylinders and they have leather boots that protect them from getting dust in them. A lot of times these boots will be all ripped. And then the control valves are right here and they have their own little leather boot boots. So these pins on the control valves here connect through linkages up to the levers at the operator station. This one is in really good shape. I've never had to mess with it and it's never leaked. I'm just going to close up these openings with tape here. We want to keep the hydraulic system clean and then I'll put it away for storage. Next we can get inside the wiring box here right behind where the battery sits and disconnect the wires that run out to the battery and the engine and the starter. Getting ready to take this whole assembly here off the tractor. I got all the connecting wiring out of here and Temperature gauge too. Now there's just three bolts down the bottom of here to undo to take what I call the tree off. All of this that mounts the steering wheel, lights, levers, all that stuff. There we go. We'll get these hydraulic lines out of the way. This is a check valve block here. I rebuilt this once when I went through the hydraulics. I rebuilt the rear cylinder too. Put new seals in that. Because everything was leaking. Next we can get this seat off. Like I said, I've done a lot on this tractor. I rebuilt the seat, I put bushings in, everything was loose. This is a new box, the old one had rusted out on the bottom. So, I've been through a lot of this tractor, it's all going to get repainted. Now we got to take the two point hitch off, the Farmall Fast Hitch. And this here is the cylinder that raises and lowers it, so we'll take that off drop the hitch on the floor. These two point hitches, the fast hitches, they're pretty complicated. There's a draft link up front that you can fix or hook to uh, the, the uh, touch control to control draft on plowing. When you're plowing, it's got the tilt control that I already disconnected. There's a lot to these. But first we'll get this cylinder disconnected. This is my fix for missing a piece on this pin piece of fencing wire. And then this rod right here is the float control. So if I pull this pin out, well come on you, it's been a while hasn't it? Persuasion. Now that I've got that pin out, the hitch can float, see, like this. Up and down and up and down. We just got to take out this huge cotter pin. And this bushing. And this bottom cotter pin. You're going to be difficult, aren't you? I can tell. I can tell just by looking at you. You got that look about you. Well, maybe we won't do that. Maybe we'll punch you down from the top. And pull you out from the bottom. There we go. Now we can pull this off and drop things. There. And then you can come off. And we can disconnect the hydraulic lines to the cylinder. This cylinder has a depth control setting, so this button here relieves pressure when it's coming down. So this is meant to be a collar that goes all the way around and it's broken someplace along the line. I think I broke it when I was plowing one time. Anyway, you set this stop wherever you want it and when it comes down contacts this pin, it relieves through here. You can see that just popped. And so the cylinder won't go any lower, it stops lowering. So you can set it to your plowing depth and then you'll automatically hit it when you put the lever down to start the next pass. Next up is this thing. This is a three point hitch conversion that Dad and I made. I used to use this tractor for various three point hitch work. Uh, brush hogging and I put the seed spreader on the back of it the broadcast cedar. I don't think I'll need it. The 504 has got a three point. And yeah, it's surprisingly little use for a three point hitch. Next we'll take this check valve out. Then we can slide the hoses through this seat base here. This is kind of a goofy assembly, to be honest with you. I would call it additive engineering instead of or additive design instead of integrated design. Kind of a pain. There we go. Next we can pull out this shaft that runs through the seat base that's kind of the pivot arm for the hydraulic cylinder that I pulled out. 
like I said, this is complicated and at times kind of goofy. But the hitch sure does work nice, I gotta say that. Next, these mounting bolts for these angles. And now a real pain in the butt. Down inside this box, there's four bolts, two up front and two in the back here. They got to come out to pull this box off. Like I said, I replaced this box and when I took the old box out, of course there was 50 years worth of mud and miscellaneous hardware down here. Everything was rusted up. The bolt heads were just about rusted off. I had a heck of a time getting the bolts out. Hopefully they'll be easier this time. I'll do the easy ones first in the rear. And now I gotta reach way up and get these. Next we're gonna drop this two point hitch off of its mounts here on the final drive. I'm getting tired of wrenching, so I got out the impact wrench. We got about a million adjustments. I believe this one here is called the bell crank. If I remember right, so we got to get it out of the way. It does its thing. It does its bell cranky thing. And then we got to get the front mounts under here. We can drag this whole thing outside where I can deal with it later. And we can take these brake pedals off. Chrome socket on an impact wrench. What's he think he's doing? Next job is to pull the wheel weights off. Why? I don't know. Why not? Sounded like a good idea. I'm going to have to pound these bolts out, so I'll put a nut back on here so I don't damage the threads. Here's the bolt, all crusty and rusty. off is a transmission and final drive cover. I haven't decided how far I'm going to go into the transmission, but I guess we'll see. I'm going to rig up the hoist on this cover because the last time I put it on, I used Permatex Right stuff, so it's glued pretty good. We'll pop it off. I take a little persuasion, you know. Just lift it from the one end at first until I get it popped and then I can lift it from the center. All right, let's put some tension on here. Hey, that was easier than I thought it would be. That's good. Here's a transmission cover. What do we see? Well, these are the three shifting forks here. This tractor never had a problem with staying in gear or anything like that, but you can see how they work here. <laughs> kind of. They move forwards and back to slide the sliding gears on the spline shafts. And here's the final drive compartment. Differential, bull gears, this is the PTO drive shaft, and this tube here goes from this oil trough up here and oils the belt pulley and the PTO in the back. And then in the front compartment here we've got the transmission. This is a sliding spline shaft, so this is how you switch gears. These are a lot different than the H's and M's. You don't have that funky double bearing up there. Um, it just goes into the front bearing. And then this is the reverse idler here. When you engage it like that, it also works different than the H's and M's in that, see that gear down there turns backwards and you put the tractor in reverse. This transmission, like the H's and M's, has these oil troughs and oil splashes up from the gears rotating and goes down and oils the bearings that way. So you've got the one here 
and then that one supplies oil to this trough here, runs down, oils the PTO and the belt pulley. And that's it for troughs. This transmission, unlike the other earlier farmalls, has a bevel gear that's cut. See how it curves, the, the teeth of the gear curve, and that's so you have more engagement with the uh, ring gear here. And I checked out the backlash on these because that's one of the primary things you want to look at. Let me get the light here where you can see. And there's not very much backlash there. That's all fine. No side to side play on the ring gear. No missing teeth on the transmission. I rotated everything around, worked the shafts. I can't feel any play in these. Maybe a little bit of play in this top shaft. I can't feel anything in the bottom shaft. No play on any bearings to speak of. And I guess the question I'm facing is how, just like the engine, how far am I going to go into this? With the MD I tore it all down to just the case. This one, the transmission's never had any problems. The issue is that it's awful hard to assess the health of some of the bearings without taking things apart and really looking at how much play there is. And again, if I ever run into a problem down the road, I can pull the lid off and work on it. So. It's a tough decision. I do know that I need to change all the seals, so I need to pull this belt pulley and PTO unit off. I need to reseal all these joints. Of course, replace the PTO seal, replace the belt pulley seal, replace the seals on the rear axles, we'll probably replace the pinion seals that go into these brake housings. They always leak, gotta take them apart. And then there's a seal that's in here on the input shaft that goes into the transmission. That's probably leaking. And the shaft seals, this has got a cross shaft that connects the brake pedals to this both sides. And these seals, of course, are gonna need to be replaced. But I guess the biggest can of worms is these axles. And they tend to leak if you remember from the MD, there's just a thin gasket here and flexing during the course of this tractor's life, these always give way and you get leaks under here. But to pull the axles off, I've got to detach them from the bull gears in here and then pull them straight out. I don't know. I don't know how far I want to go with this. This is what makes working on old tractors so much fun. These two wheel weight bolts here have rush jacked into the holes. They were all that way, but I was able to drive out the rest of them. This one I mushroomed the nut on, and then I cut it off and put the air chisel on it and pounded on it with that, and it didn't come at all either. So I'm going to try this again. That's mushroomed over enough where I'm going to have to grind it. In hindsight, I probably just should have put the torch on it to begin with, but I thought I'd get away without it. It's ground flush. We'll try hammering on it again. She came a little bit. Enough of this messing around. It's time for the heat wrench. Heat her back up and try it again. There are very few bolts that resist the heat wrench, but this one did, and I figure probably when I was driving on it early on, it expanded out against this hole and it's wedged in there. So I drilled it out thinking, well, if I put a punch down in there, then it'll have less resistance. It'll tend to collapse or bend more in on itself. Here's the other side of that bolt and the weight, and it's recessed down in there, so I can't really do anything at this side. I tried prying on the weight to get it off. It's the last bolt left. It's not stuck in this weight it's stuck in here it turns in the weight what a pain so we'll give this a try she's moving yep that's doing the trick and there we go oh what a mess Sometimes you just have to keep trying things till you find something that works. It's good to have options. The next job is to take the rear wheels off the tractor, and for that, I need a transmission stand, and Dad made me one. We used this stand for the MD, but he cut it apart and made it adjustable so that these rear supports here, they could be front supports depending on the tractor, but they bolt onto the bottom so you can move them 
in or out or if you need a taller one you can just make a taller one and bolt it on there and the same with the front one that just bolts on and we can move that around but the base will stay the same no matter what tractor we're working on this will be very handy so in order to get it under here we just take this one off We have to lift the tractor up a little bit side by side to get this bolt hole line up. We want the wheels to be a little bit off the ground and bolt it in. Having a stand like this makes things so much easier. I've got these movable splitting stands at the front of the tractor, transmission stand at the back. I haven't put up the center support yet, but it's time to take the wheels off. And I've already taken off half of the nuts and loosened up the other ones so this shouldn't be too difficult i've got vice grips holding the square head bolt on the other side and we'll just zip them off see told you i loosened them up i guess the difficulty is going to be that i know these tires are loaded with calcium chloride they're going to be heavy Yep, just as long as you keep them upright though, <laughs> you'll do all right. These are going outside. Now we can remove the wheel centers and what I did is I took a one inch breaker bar, hooked it on and then put this I don't know, four foot pipe on it and loosened them with that. Takes a lot of leverage. Now we need the gun to take them off. Wrench, gun, ugga dugga, whatever it is. Then drive out this clamp. Rusty. And hopefully this will pop loose. This will probably make a big bang. Outside you go, and then the other wheel. We're getting down there now. It's very spindly looking without anything on it. We're almost there. The very last thing to take off is this torque tube. And this is a little different than H&M's. You have to detach it and you can slide it forward and then the knuckle where the transmission input shaft and the clutch shaft that goes through here connects you can get to it once you slide this out a little bit and then you can disconnect that. So we got to take off four bolts here. There's a couple alignment dowels, one on each side here. There we go. Here's the knuckle, the U-joint. Got to disconnect that. Well, this knuckle does not want to come apart, so I'm going to try sliding it off the shaft and go from there. See, this is meant to have some flex in it as the frame flexes a little bit. We can just tap these tapered bolts loose here. This is all that's left. Rear axles, transmission, final drive. And here's what the input shaft looks like going on here. Here's that universal joint. There's a seal in here. And they're always leaking. This one was not too bad, but it is leaking. And then the counter shaft down here just has a plate on it, whereas on an H or an M it would drive the hydraulic pump. And here's a torque tube or clutch housing. You know, I mentioned there's always mice nests in here. And at the other end here, this is the transmission end. This is how the mice get in. There's a hole right there where the clutch linkage comes through. And the mice climb right up in there. Hey, there's some of our chicken feathers. Those stinking mice stealing chicken feathers. So I'll have to bring that outside and pressure wash it out. And now that that's all that's left of the tractor, you can see where the rest of the tractor is. It's all piled over here, <laughs> all the pieces. <laughs> 
And then there's a fair amount of big pieces outside the doors and the rear wheels are outside the door over there. Engine block and front wheels are over here. I got stuff scattered all over the place. The question is how much further am I gonna go? So you know, you're tearing and tearing apart and pretty soon you run to, into a point where you quit tearing apart and you can start building back up with a bunch of cleaning in between that, what I call the turnaround point. I don't know how far I'm gonna go into this transmission. I gotta take the brakes apart here still and think about it. I do know, I looked, was looking at the parts manual and one thing is these uh, axles, these rear axles have two seals in them. There's one uh, oil seal here that runs around the shaft, the lip seal, and then there's another seal out here. So the axles definitely gotta come off, replace those seals, replace all the seals on the transmission. How much further I'll go? I don't know. I guess you'll find out in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm running a little long with these, but there's a lot of work to be done. <laughs> I'll see you next time.